Hello. I know that when you hear Elizabeth Malovidov, you think a, a tall blonde. Um, my husband is Russian. <laughs> Milovidov. Um, so, listen, I only have uh, 30 minutes, uh, 25 minutes, I think. And so what I'm going to do is take you through uh, a visual story. I'm going to show as much as I can, uh, so just bear with me. I will speak slowly, but I will click rapidly. So first, you're saying a digital parenting coach. What is this? Uh, well, basically, I am a lawyer uh, from California. I'm a law professor in France. I'm a consultant, uh, and I do anything that I can to empower parents. This is just me working uh, at the Council of Europe. Uh, this is me in France 24, where I go on twice a month and share uh, stories, what's happening online. Uh, by the way, I'm showing you this because it's not fake news. This is real. Um, I also have done video tutorials for the Council of Europe. Uh, there I'm trying to pretend to be Oprah. I do also consult for um, companies, so this is doing some work with Google, YouTube. And I am the mother of two little boys. Um, you will only see the back of their heads because, again, my husband is Russian, I am African American, and I'm trying to act as their digital guardian and allow them their own uh, time and space to decide when they want to be online. This picture has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> it is just so darn cool, I had to include it. No, seriously, meeting Michelle Obama was just a true inspiration, and so I work even harder now to meet more parents and teachers and kids. So now, here we go. What I'm going to do is set the scene for you, talking about some of the challenges, the trends, and the impact. Trends. Please, I'm going to mix them up. They're going to be good and bad. No judgment. I'm just going to roll through very quickly because I'm watching my time. Connected watches. We've heard about them. Germany, banned, 2017. We have fitness trackers on our children, which sometimes leads them to feel that they are fat. Virtual reality, which can be very exciting, but there are also health consequences that we don't always think about. Fortnite, 10th season. If you have children, I see the smiles already, so um, I can see the teachers, the children who have to deal with Fortnite. Apex Legends, uh, this one came out in February of this year. It was supposed to be uh, this big game and it ended up being the big game, but not as big as we expected. Minecraft, uh, yes, we have teachers in the United States who use Minecraft for educational purposes. Roblox is just now exploding and they now have 100 million monthly users. What is very cool about Roblox is that the children are also creating their own games. Connected diapers. Yeah, yeah, these things exist. So, um, yes, you can tell if your baby is hydrated enough. Uh, as a lawyer, these types of things are always particularly interesting to me because you can imagine a husband and wife having a dispute and the husband says, oh, but the wife didn't change the diapers enough. This is grounds for a divorce. Or for the, the nannies, uh, the, the babysitters not doing their job, but everything's connected. We can also track your temperature of the baby and, of course, pacifiers to track the temperature as well. The best part about this pacifier is that if you lose it, there is an alarm so you can find it with your phone. Artificial intelligence. We already use artificial intelligence with our emails. We see that a lot of the tech companies are making vast strides and this is something to watch in the future. It's going to bring some great opportunities. Virtual assistants, of course, you're using this with your Siri, your Google. Uh, it's going to become more conversational. And the evolution of, evolution of e-babysitters. What started off as something very cool, just to stay in the back seat of the, the car to keep the children company, has gone to some more. We now see iPads on strollers. I know, I know. We now see iPads in beds. Um, usually, I will admit when the Americans have created some of these things, this one was British. 
Then we start seeing headlines like this with digital medias like cocaine for babies developing brains. Uh, we start hearing about things like virtual autism. Is digital addiction a real threat to kids? It's like heroin. Addictive video games may change children's brains in the same ways of drug and alcohol. Deep fakes. We don't know what's real online anymore. I know this was a tough one. I was just in Seychelles, Mauritius, and Mauritius last week doing trainings with the Ministry of Education and speaking with parents. And they told me that the children are using YouTube to look up how to um, put a hex on someone or how to create a love potion. Facial recognition software, no reason to panic. We already have this on our phones. Smart refrigerator, I love this one. The idea that if I run out of eggs, it will order some for me. Smart homes, these things already exist. Driverless cars, they're coming to a highway near you. Pizza in New Zealand, drones are delivering pizza. Why not? I think that Amazon had tried some deliveries as well. Implanted chips in Sweden, you don't have to carry a wallet or a train ticket. You can have a, ch a chip the size of a grain of rice, rice implanted in your hand. From what I understood, there's only about 3,000 people uh, with these implants at the moment. Flying police in Dubai. Robot caregivers in Japan. Smart cities in Singapore. Ah, yeah. <laughs> And then we also have Estonia, where everything is going online. Prosthetics, we're making great strides. For $4,000, I can print you a house. For a little bit less, I can print you a gun. We have camera pills, uh, where you can go inside the mouth all the way down the stomach, see what's happening. We're creating music, we're creating film, we're making connections. There is so much body positivity on social media. There are 33 Instagram accounts that you can follow. And we also have other Instagram stars which are more inclusive, members of the Down Community Syndrome. And with Minecraft, we have autism in Minecraft, showing kids that they can have a safe place to play. But of course, the challenges are for both the teachers and the parents who are the ones who are the most in contact with these young people that are in the digital highway and who have already a huge task by educating and by raising them. And now we're adding even more by saying raise digital citizens. So this is just looking at some of the challenges that teachers have told me, you know, that it's difficult to build empathy. It's difficult to get children to, to understand teamwork and to support each other that teachers just have too many roles, that your, your caregivers, your counselors, your nurses, your coaches, you're doing it all. Plus you have meetings and paperwork. You don't have enough planning time. You have to collect data, you have standards, you have to show why those tests are uh, creating the grades that they're creating. And of course, probably the most particularly challenging is to have one curriculum for all the different uh, types of students and then to add in digital components as well. And English. Yeah, <laughs> the laughter begins. Why is English the, the language of internet? When you're trying to search for resources, sometimes you can't find what you need in your native language. I do live in France, I speak French and really bad Russian. Critical thinking. Teachers have a tough time trying to in, get, really have children understand critical thinking, problem solving, reasoning, evaluating. We've already heard about fake news and misinformation. These are just challenges that teachers have to combat every day, every month in countries around the world. Again, I'm American. I will not even start with the conspiracy theories. I will be here all afternoon. But not only do the teachers have to deal with critical thinking, misinformation, conspiracy theories, but parents do too. And parents also have to balance their family and their careers. They have to say no. They have to set limits, set boundaries. 
There is an overload of information where if they want to try to understand something on internet safety or parental control, there's too much information. And then sometimes there's a lack of information. They can't get what they need when they need it. And then quite simply, this is just the idea here that we give these tablets and smartphones uh, to young children. This was just a simple test that I do in almost every country. Normally I would have you pull out your phones and I would show you some tricks on your phones too, but again, I'm not here all day. But just asking a six-year-old, knowing that a six-year-old, seven-year-old will do something as simple as what is sex? They're curious, it's normal, it's natural. If they write what is sex on a search engine, they get something that looks like this. If they then click to images, they get a little bit more. If they click to videos, they get even more. And you're thinking, okay, Elizabeth, that's in English. Yeah, well, I looked it up in German. Was ist Sex? I get the same sort of thing on the first page. I then click to images. Already these are not images that I would want my seven-year-old to see. And then I click to videos. Now, I can't read German, but I have a pretty good idea of what's happening there. Now, we're in Poland, so you know I did the same thing. I don't speak Polish. Please tell me this is, this does say what is sex, right? I didn't look up something, everyone's like, yeah, yeah, it does, unfortunately, yeah. So this is just the first page. Again, if you go over two or three pages, we know what children are going to see. Here are the images. Not so bad here in Poland. But the video, it's all there. This is just the first page. These are the things that parents have to deal with. And you can say, oh, but Elizabeth, we have parental controls. We have parental controls on our devices. Yes, on that device. But what happens when the children are on the bus with another child or when they go to the sleepover or when they're hanging out? We need to help all of the children understand, all of the parents. Um, happy slapping, I haven't been hearing as much about happy slapping uh, in Europe, but when I was in East Africa, that is the rage. Uh, the idea that kids are filming each other, beating each other up, and then uploading the videos. Problematic use, I will not say in uh, addiction, just because we know that it has the medical connotations. Uh, but we do know that even as adults, we have problems as well. Tech neck, right? We have problems with our necks, we have problems with our thumbs. And then we start hearing about myopia and that kids are becoming more nearsighted. I was in uh, England and the University of Leeds had brought out a study talking about how there is a true increase of nearsightedness and we've seen that with the increase of using tablets. Cyberbullying, this one, um, we do, we've made huge strides but there's still so much more to be done. And of course, trolling right along with it. Uh, TikTok, only because it was the number one app downloaded last year, and I'm sure all the kids are playing and, and uh, creating those videos. Sexting. Sexting is still happening, of course, and in the United States, when the kids even know that there are uh, potential punishments, they do it anyway. And what I try to explain to adults is sexting is the same thing that you and I did when we were kids. You show me yours, I'll show you mine. Except the problem, this, the kids here are playing doctor, of course. The problem here is that it goes online, stays online, and it can go viral. Inappropriate content, uh, we're tr seeing things happening with age verification, it hasn't happened yet. Grooming, uh, also uh, a challenge that um, we have to face and deal with. Revenge porn, you know, a new one. We just had the first um, person who was convicted of hosting a revenge, revenge porn website. Uh, that was a couple of years ago. Sextortion. I particularly leave this slide up because this was a campaign by Europol from two summers ago uh, called Say No. And what was important was that they shared that children as young as seven years old are being targeted online. Seven. And yet if you ask most parents, do they know about sextortion? They may not. Uh, persuasive and motivational techniques and designs. These are also challenges because who wants something that's just in gray scale where you can have all the wonderful colors that are swerving? Then we've got our other challenges. We've got the ice bucket challenge. We have things that just go viral online where all the kids want to do it. Here on the left is the salt and ice challenge where kids would be rubbing their hands with ice and salt, filming it, and then placing it online. 
On the right is the eraser challenge. You recite the alphabet while you rub your hand with an eraser. I hope you didn't see this one, but this one was recent a few months ago. It was the cheese slice challenge where they would throw a slice of cheese onto a baby's face. Ha ha, the Americans thought it was funny. Cello tape selfies. Um, I leave this one in because these things start off as something funny for an adult and then children do do them. I was speaking to 12 year olds. I said, this is silly, right? And they said, no, no, we've done this, but we put it around our wrists. I asked them what happened and they said, well, I almost passed out, and so I asked someone to cut the tape off me. The A4 paper challenge, always standards of beauty, where you have to be the size of an A4 piece of paper. And of course, the Americans are back again with the Tide Pod challenge. This, of course, was detergent, which the kids thought would be fun to eat, vomit, throw up, and videotape this. And our famous blue whale challenge. You can't talk about challenges without the, the fake blue whale. Or Momo. And what I always like to include is how the Japanese artist did go and destroy the statue. So that way kids could see that it was fake. Um, it's still causing hysteria. I still have children tell me, no, no, M Momo is real. Slenderman. I leave Slenderman because this is also uh, something that kids still talk about now uh, in France and in the United States. Slenderman was a fictional character, and uh, in order to be become his acolyte, you had to go and kill someone. These two young 12-year-old American girls uh, found one of their classmates and stabbed her 19 times. She did not die. Uh, but they, w they believed in this fake uh, character, and they thought he was real. Yep, there's an app for that. There's an app for everything. <laughs> there, there really is. Um, I don't, I'm not even going to read that, so the translation just has to stay. And look at that, people are taking pictures. You guys are so funny. Um, this is real. Again, we give our children our phones and our tablets, and they go into the app store, they go into Google Play, and they can find these apps. Uh, I teach law and technology, and I asked some of my students to find some of the most outrageous things they could, and they did. So, of course, virtual reality in the porn industry is huge. Um, what you see on the person's face is um, to increase the olfactory senses. So now you can watch your porn, you can experience it in virtual reality, and you can smell it. Sex robots, of course, the, they're here. And this is me going on Amazon. And of course, I like to do my tests when I'm in the country. There's Amazon, the dolls in Germany. There were more in Germany. And here you are in Poland. And look at your dolls here. So you can do this test yourself. Go on Amazon and just put a robot sex doll. This is, again, what your children can see on Amazon. Now, and you had pages and pages. And she also looks like she's about uh, 12. So we talk about adult uh, sex dolls, we can talk about child sex dolls, and this is from April of 2018. This was an article where the House in the United States passed a bill banning sex dolls that look like children, because prior to that, Amazon had them on sale. The idea was that you could sell anatomy, ana anatomically correct child sex dolls, and that this would be a, self, a safe outlet for pedophiles safe outlet versus uh, frustration of substitute. Then we have issues, of course, with privacy, where we have uh, children, um, young mothers, parents, um, creating these blogs, and you know, it's fine, except when it's not, and when it starts going too far. Uh, we have kid influencers who are making lots of money. I'm sure that you have all heard at least one child say, I want to become an influencer. I did a test myself. It was a recent uh, study where people had asked children, do you want to become an astronaut or do you want to become a YouTuber? The children in the United States said YouTuber. The children in China said astronaut. I did the test in my own family. My boys are 9 and 12. I am doing this all the time, and I just knew they would say astronaut, and they both said YouTuber. Go Google. 
Uh, juice jacking is also uh, just, just terminology, things that we're hearing more. You see people charging in uh, their telephones because, of course, we need to have our phones charged. But what they're not thinking about is the fact that the end of that charger is like a USB key with four points of data, uh, four points of access two for data, two for electricity. Anytime that you charge into one of these public charging stations, on an airplane, on a bus, uh, in a taxi, that you're leaving your data open if there is malware already installed. Cyber flashing is also one other challenge that we're facing where uh, if you have an iPhone and you leave your airdrop open, you can receive a picture uh, and just like in the old days being flashed in a park, you can be flashed with something and you think, oh, but maybe I won't see that picture. Yes, you do see the picture. It comes up very small. Uh, those of you with Android, you have the same issues with Bluetooth. Upskirting, this is a new one. August 22nd, 2019, this man was arrested. He was caught right in the act of upskirting. He had, um, had uh, upskirted 555 women. You're saying, what is upskirting? Upskirting is taking a camera and filming between women's uh, legs uh, underneath their skirts without their knowledge or permission. Usually you find this on metros or in public places. So what is some of the impact? I have four minutes left. Whew. We can imagine for the impact, right? So I'm going to just say that there, of course there's good and of course there's bad. Uh, and it's up for, to us to, to figure out how we are going to empower parents to support their digital families. Um, you know, there are news articles, there are medical, this is from the Mayo Clinic that talks about FOMO, fear of missing out, how it's real, how social media increases depression and loneliness. Then there we have the other side, which is not that social media increases depression and loneliness, just that the people who are on social media more often are vulnerable. This is from the Royal College of Pediatricians. And also to show, here is the positives about screen time. And then the thumbs down, the negative about screen time. It's very difficult for any of us to understand the true impact of what's happening. We are living a social experiment. Uh, using an example of selfies as far as impact, again, uh, this good and bad idea, and I'm sorry to use uh, such terminology, good and bad. Normally I prefer just to say responsible use, but uh, it's a little bit easier. Um, we have InstaPerfect. Is inequality fueling the rise of the sexy selfie? You've seen them all. You've seen the young girls doing the duck lip uh, for that perfect photo. And not only do they do one, they have to take 200 to get that one shot. But what we also think is that the advent of social media has led to the proliferation of sexualized images of both men and women. And so here are our boys. This is an article from GQ magazine, how to take a selfie like a male model. The boys also have the perfect eyebrows and the duck lips. But again, on the other side, we're talking about female empowerment, where it's the women themselves who are taking the pictures in the positions that they want to be in, and isn't that powerful? And then, again, showing uh, selfies with a grizzly bear, because why not? Or with bulls on the bull run, again, why not? Which leads to uh, uh, an article that was in the International Journal of Mental Health Addiction talking about a study of selfitis. We now have selfie-itis, okay, because people are taking so many selfies. So here we have borderline acute and chronic. If you're borderline, you're taking one photo, at least one a day, but you're not posting. If you're acute, you're taking one photo at least three times a day and you're posting each one. And if you're chronic, you're just taking tons and tons. And I see everybody's taking pictures because yes, they wanna show that to their friends that are taking too many pictures. Again, on the other side of the Instagram, we have the positive uses. This woman has stretch marks, she's empowering others. We have the healing uses. This young woman has burns all over her body and yet she uses Instagram to share positive messages. What we do know today is that family life is evolving. It's no longer just in front of the radio. We have our digital families uh, that have tablets, that have computers, and I'm not forgetting the other sides of the demographics uh, where we're just using smartphones. They're also incredibly powerful. Just to give you one more uh, idea of this flip side, we have the gaming, 
So here we have the who saying it's the gaming disorder is a mental health condition. And then on the other side, we have e-sports scholarships where we're offering scholarships uh, to young people who, are, who excel at gaming. How do we draw the line? What is the true impact? We have communication. We're watching videos. And we're watching videos. Oh, that is so horrible. I'm almost there. They're watching videos. They are binging. Uh, I know that some of you have binged. I myself have binge watched and, you know, that's what we can do. Uh, there's research, of course, and doing homework. They're playing games online, social media connections. Uh, they're using chats and forums and MMS. They're downloading music, games, films legally, I hope. And for me, I just really wanted to, to put this out there for you now as your um, sort of conference challenge while this little video just runs on the side, is that you are here and you really can make this difference. I would love it if you would network and if you would brainstorm and share uh, your stories and your best practices because the digital age is already here. We're living it and we must adapt and we do have the, the, the knowledge, the experience, the maturity to help parents even if we don't understand all the tech. And I tell the parents the same thing, they really can help their children. Because what we just saw in that video, all of those things that we used to find and go to the library and pick up the thesaurus and this book and that book, it's all now in the hands of our children. If you need me, I'm here for the next two days because I will be using your Polish examples and your examples from Germany when I go around uh, the world and share stories. So please, I count on you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please stay for a moment. Maybe please stay. Proszę Państwa. Czy mój mikrofon wrócił? Wrócił. Proszę Państwa, czas na jedno pytanie. Stali. Czy ktoś z Państwa chciałby? Elizabeth, time for one question from the room. Oh, so if it's only one, that's good. Wait, I'm going to hook myself up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Czyktoś? No, I'm here for two days. <laughs> it's not a problem. If you're too shy, I'm here. I'm very nice. Proszę Państwa, skoro nie ma... O, jest pytanie. What age do you think it's appropriate to start uh, for the for the kids to start their online presence? Because you're not showing your kids and you're waiting for them. So what age will be like the right time? Yeah, um, I hate that question. <laughs> Um, it's really difficult, and that is because it's, I tell parents, your house, your rules. But I also tell them, uh, as a lawyer, think about data protection. Think about privacy. Um, my children, their faces um, are not on social media. Um, my 12-year-old will turn 13 in January. He will want to sign up for things. We'll see, we'll do it case by case basis. If he can show me that he understands and he's mature and he's posting correctly, of course it's no problem. What I do have issue with is when I go into schools and I see seven-year-olds and eight-year-olds with Instagram accounts, um, with Snapchat, with other things. I know it's very difficult with WhatsApp, for example, because now the age is 16. Uh, before it was 13, a lot of parents use this to communicate. I think that if parents are there and they're supporting their children, I don't really have any issues. It's when the children are there uh, by themselves, having fun, uh, not having fun, that's when I think it's tough. Thank you so much. Yay.